Hello everyone, it's Tori from Tori Story Creations, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to crochet this cute amigurumi otter. As you can see here, I have two different sized otters. The smaller otter is about 7 inches tall, or 17.8 centimeters tall, while the larger otter is about 10.5 inches tall, or 26.7 centimeters tall. These otters were both made following the same pattern that I'm going to show you in this video, but I used a different yarn thickness and crochet hook size for each of the otter sizes. I'm going to use a thicker yarn in this video so I can make the larger otter, but feel free to use any size yarn that you have with an appropriate size crochet hook. Just know that the size of your amigurumi otter will vary depending on the size crochet hook and yarn thickness that you use. So let's get started with the tutorial. For this tutorial, you're going to need the following materials. Black and pink felt, scissors, a yarn needle, a hot glue gun with some glue. If you have fabric glue, that also works. And fiber fill stuffing. Some optional materials are sewing pins, I use sewing pins to place all of the pieces together so that I know where to sew them. It also helps keep them in place while I sew. And a stitch marker. I rely on stitch markers to keep track of my stitch count and the start of my rows when I'm crocheting. I highly recommend using stitch markers. They are lifesavers. If you don't have stitch markers, you can also use a paper clip or a scrap piece of yarn. If you'd like to make the smaller otter, which is approximately 7 inches tall, I used Hobby's Baby Snuggle yarn in colors white for the head, purple for the body, and green for the kelp. You'll also need a 5mm crochet hook and a pair of 8mm safety eyes. You can also use black felt if you don't have safety eyes. If you're going to make the larger otter, which is about 10.5 inches tall, you're going to need the following materials. First up is your yarn. This is Bernie Baby Blanket Yarn in the colors white for the head, blue for the body, and green for the kelp. But you can use whatever colors you wish. You'll also need an 8mm crochet hook and a pair of 12mm safety eyes. Again, you can use black felt if you don't have safety eyes. I'll list all the materials in the description box below and also put a few links to where you can get your yarn and some of the other materials like safety eyes. Now we're going to crochet the body of our otter. Our finished otter body should look like this. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six stitches inside. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches in our round. We're going to start off using our white yarn. So if you've watched my previous tutorial videos, you might have seen me make magic circles using the double loop method. Today I'm going to show you how to create a magic circle with only one loop to give you a different option on how you can make them. We're going to take note of the rectangle that forms from our pointer finger and ring finger knuckles. So you can see across here, down here, across here, and back up here. So this rectangle. Next, we're going to grab our yarn and hold the tail end of our yarn in the bottom inner corner of our rectangle using our thumb. Next, we're going to pull our yarn diagonally across till it reaches the top outer corner of our rectangle. If we flip our hand over, we're going to pull the yarn straight across to meet the bottom outer corner of our rectangle. And then we'll pull it diagonally again to meet the top inner corner of our rectangle and that will form an X. We'll pull this straight across our knuckles one more time and then we're going to insert it between our ring finger and pinky and hold it in place using our thumb. So now you should have an X on the front side of your hand and if you flip it over you just have two parallel lines. So now we're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to insert it underneath the top outer corner of our X. And then we're going to turn our hook so that we hook onto 
the top inner corner of our X. And we're going to pull that underneath the top outer corner. And you'll see that I'm twisting my hook so that my hook then faces up and we have one loop around my hook. Next, I'm going to adjust my fingers so I can see this piece of yarn and we're going to hook on to the yarn that's closest to my palm. So we're gonna insert our hook underneath that and hook onto that. And then we are going to pull this underneath the loop that's already on our hook. Once we've done that, we're going to grab this chunk right here of knots and we'll slide our fingers out. So at this point, you should have something that looks a bit like this. So you can see our yarn tail is inside of the circle, so you're going to want to pull that out. And then you're going to want to bring your working yarn up to the top of your hook and your tail end closest to the bottom of your hook. So now you can see that we have our tail, a loop here, and then our working yarn. So this is actually the loop of our magic circle. And it's called a magic circle because I can easily take my tail end of my yarn and I can pull this and it will tighten the loop or I can pull the string on the loop and it will make the loop bigger. So I'm going to keep it at a medium size. And now it's time to create our six single crochets inside of our magic circle. So to do that, I'm going to insert my hook inside of the circle. I'll yarn over using my working yarn. I'll pull that back up through the circle and I should have two loops around my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over again with my working yarn and pull this through both of the loops that are on my hook. You'll see that I have a V shape here and that is our stitch, our first single crochet stitch. You'll see that I have a V here and that is our first single crochet stitch. So I'm going to do that again. I'll insert my hook into the circle. I'll yarn over, pull that back up through the circle. I'll have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over again and I'll pull that through both of the loops that were on my hook. And that is my second single crochet. So now I'm going to make four more single crochets until I have a total of six in my circle. Three, four, five, and six. So once you have a total of six single crochets in your circle, we're going to tighten the circle. So to do that, we're going to take our yarn tail and we're going to give it a tug and that should close up this loop and we're going to want to tug it pretty tight so that it closes it up completely. Okay. So move the tail to the back side. And now we've completed row one, our magic circle. At this point, we should have six stitches around. So next I'm going to insert my stitch marker just to keep track of my stitches. For row two, we're going to increase in each stitch around our circle. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So to create an increase, we're going to do two single crochets in each stitch. So I'll find my first stitch and I'll insert my hook. I'll yarn over, pull that up through my stitch. I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over again and I'll pull that through. So that is my first single crochet. So to complete our increase, I'll insert my hook back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull that through my stitch. I should have two loops around my hook again. I'll yarn over and pull through. And that creates our first increase. So now I'm going to keep repeating this all the way around our circle. So I'll do one single crochet and then a second single crochet in the same stitch. So that's our second increase. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches in our round. For row three, we're going to single crochet and then we're going to increase. 
We'll repeat this pattern until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 3, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. So we'll start off by single crocheting in the first stitch, and then we'll increase in our next stitch, and we'll keep repeating this pattern. So we'll single crochet, and then we'll increase, we'll single crochet, increase, and repeat. Once we've completed row 3, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. For row 4, we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches, and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 4, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So we'll single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in the second stitch, and now we're going to increase, so two single crochets in the same stitch. So that's the first time we're doing this, we'll repeat this five more times. So single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase, and repeat. Once we've completed row 4, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. For row 5, we're going to single crochet in the first 3 stitches, and then we'll increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern 5 more times, so a total of 6 times, until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 5, we should have a total of 30 stitches around. So we'll single crochet in the first stitch, the second stitch, and we'll also single crochet in the third stitch, and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. So we'll single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, increase, and then we'll keep repeating this until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 5, we should have a total of 30 stitches around. For rows 6 through 9, so for the next 4 rows, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our row. Once we've completed each of these rows, we should have a total of 30 stitches around. So for each of these 4 rows, I'm just going to keep single crocheting in each stitch in the row. So I'll just keep single crocheting. So just pausing for a moment, if you are crocheting these rows and you see that your amigurumi starts curling upwards and that your yarn tail is on the outside. This outside where your yarn tail is is actually supposed to be the inside of your amigurumi. It's considered the wrong side. So we're going to actually flip it so that the yarn tail is on the inside and that the correct side is facing outwards. 
and then you can continue on with your single crochets. Once you've finished row 9, your otter should look like this. And you should have 30 stitches around. For row 10, we're going to single crochet in the first 3 stitches, and then we're going to decrease. We'll repeat this pattern 5 more times, so a total of 6 times, until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 10, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So I'm going to single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in our second stitch, and single crochet in the third stitch. And now I'm going to decrease. So to decrease, we're going to single crochet two stitches together. So I'll insert my hook in the first stitch, I'll yarn over, pull that back, up through the stitch, insert my hook into the second stitch, yarn over, pull that back up through the stitch, so I should have three loops around my hook. I'll yarn over again and I'll pull this through all of the loops that were on my hook. And that is a standard decrease. If you also know the invisible decrease, go ahead and you can use that as well. So we'll continue on, we'll single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then we will decrease. So insert our hook, yarn over, pull that through, we'll have two loops. Insert our hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, we should have three loops around our hook. We'll yarn over and pull through all those three loops to connect those stitches together. And then we'll do the same pattern all the way around our circle until we reach the end of our row. When you get to the last stitch, so our last decrease of our row, you're going to pause here and get out your blue yarn. Because now we're going to swap colors and start using the blue yarn instead. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker and to change colors on a decrease, we're going to insert our hook inside our first stitch. We'll yarn over, pull through, insert our hook inside of the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then instead of yarning over with our white color, we're going to grab our blue yarn and wrap it around our hook, and we're going to pull this yarn through our loops. So now we should have one blue loop around our hook and this finishes our decrease and color change so what i'm going to do i'm going to make this loop just a little bit bigger for now and i'm going to fasten this off with a knot so i'll take the tail end of my blue yarn and then my working white yarn and i'm just going to create a simple knot to tie those together and secure them and then I'll grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut my working white yarn. So now we can insert our hook in our blue yarn. We can pull our working blue yarn a little bit tighter. And now we've completed row 10. And we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So now we're also going to pause to take some time to attach the safety eyes onto our otter. So I'm going to count my rows from the very top until I find row seven and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to insert our safety eyes in between row seven and eight, so along this line. So first, grab one of your safety eyes and insert it between row seven and eight. And then we're going to count over about five stitches and insert our other eye there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and then this stitch is where I'm going to insert my other safety eye. So once you like the placement of your eyes, you're going to grab the backings 
and secure them onto your amigurumi. Now that we've completed attaching our safety eyes, we're going to continue crocheting. For rows 11 through 19, so a total of nine rows, we're going to single crochet in each stitch in our row. Once we've completed all nine of these rows, we should end up with a total of 24 stitches around. So we're just going to keep single crocheting in every stitch in each of these next nine rows. And as you get to the end of each row, you can take out your stitch marker, complete your last stitch of that row, and then you can insert your stitch marker again and continue single crocheting in every stitch around until you've completed your 19th row. Once you finish row 19, you should have a total of 24 stitches around. And your otter should start looking like this. For row 20, we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches, and then we're going to decrease. We'll repeat this pattern five more times, so a total of six times until we reach the end of our row. Once we've completed row 20, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. So I'll single crochet, single crochet, and then decrease. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, then insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, then pull that through all three loops on my hook. And then I'll keep repeating this single crochet, single crochet, decrease. Once you've completed row 20, you should have a total of 18 stitches around. For row 21, we're going to single crochet and then we're going to decrease. We'll repeat this pattern five more times, so a total of six times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 21, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So I'll start off with the single crochet. And then I'm going to decrease and then I'll single crochet and decrease and then I'll keep repeating this pattern of single crocheting and decreasing until I've reached the end of my row. Once we've completed row 21, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. Now it's time to pause so that we can stuff our otter. So get out your fiber fill stuffing and just grab small pieces and insert it into your otter until it's nice and full of stuffing. I like to make sure that I push all of my initial stuffing right at the top of the head so that I can start shaping it and make it more rounded. Once 
once you've completed stuffing your otter, we're going to continue closing this up a bit and then build out the tail. For row 22, we're going to decrease all the way around our circle. So this will be a total of six decreases. Once we've completed row 22, we should have a total of six stitches around. So we'll decrease in each stitch for six stitches. That was our second decrease and this is our third decrease. Fourth decrease. Our fifth decrease. And I'll take out my stitch marker so I can complete the last decrease. Once you've completed row 22, you should have a total of six stitches around. Now we're going to build out the tail. So for rows 23 through 28, so a total of six rows, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around. Once we've completed row 28, we should have a total of six stitches around. So now I'll build out the tail by single crocheting in each stitch around. This is my second. third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So that's my 23rd row. So I'm going to keep doing this until I've completed my 28th row. Once you've completed row 28, your otter should look similar to this, and you should have six stitches around. So now I'm just going to slip stitch in my very next stitch, and then trim the tail using my scissors, and I will pull this up. So that we sort of fasten off this small end and then I'm just going to take some stuffing and I'm just going to stuff the tail just a little bit. And after I've stuffed the tail a little bit I'm going to get out my yarn needle and I'm going to thread it with this tail and then I'm going to sew this hole closed. So to do that, if you look at your stitches, it forms a V. We're going to insert our needle in just the first outer loop of each stitch. That's two, three, four, five, and six, and then you'll yank on this and it should tighten this closed. And once it's closed, you can insert your hook inside one end of the tail and out a different end. And then I personally like to add an extra knot to secure this. You're just going to hook on to a piece of yarn, pull your needle through, and then once you have a small loop, you're going to insert your needle, and then you're going to pull that to fasten a knot. 
and that just makes sure that the end is just extra secure. You'll insert your hook into your tail and out a different end. And then we're just going to trim this up right here. So get out your scissors and trim the tail off. And now we finish crushing the body of our otter. Now we're going to crochet the arms and legs of our otter using our blue yarn. A finished arm or leg should look like this. You're going to want to crochet four of these. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six single crochets inside. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches in our round. So to get started with our magic circle, we're going to find the tail end of our yarn. And we're going to create an X shape from this bottom knuckle here to the top knuckle on the opposite diagonal. And then we'll come back around to this bottom knuckle and then go back around to this diagonal. So grabbing our yarn tail, we're going to hold it on this bottom knuckle closest to our palm with our thumb. We'll place it diagonally across till it reaches the outer knuckle in the top corner. We'll bring it straight down to the knuckle in the bottom corner, and then we're going to diagonally pull it across so that it forms the X shape. Then we'll bring this straight down and we'll hold it in place with our thumb. So now what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook in the top outer corner of our X, and then we're going to reach over and hook onto this top inner corner of our X. And we're going to pull this under. We're going to turn our hook around so that we have one loop around our hook. So now that we have a loop around our hook, I'm going to yarn over with that same top inner corner so to do that, at this point, I'm going to rotate my hand a bit and hook onto that. And then I'm going to pull this through the loop that's already on my hook. Then I'm going to take my fingers off of this and you can see that I'm left with something that looks like this. So we're almost done with our magic circle. One thing that we want to do is we can see that this tail end of our yarn is a bit tangled, so I'm going to untangle that. And then I'm going to make sure that tail end is near the bottom of my hook, and then the working yarn is closer to the top, so it's easy to grab. So this actually completes the loops of our magic circle. And now it's time to crochet all of our single crochets inside of our circle. So to do that, I'm going to insert my hook into the circle. I'll yarn over with my working yarn. I'll pull that back up through the circle and I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over with my working yarn and I'll pull this through both of the loops that was on my hook. So now you can see I have a slight V shape here and that is my first stitch, my single crochet. So now I'm going to create five more single crochets in here. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull that back up through my circle. I'll have two loops, yarn over again. I'm going to pull this through both of the loops. So I have my next single crochet, and then I'll continue. So this one is three, four, five, and six. So now we can see one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets in our circle. So now the last thing that we need to do to complete this circle with six single crochets inside is to tighten the circle and get rid of this extra loop here. So to do that we're just going to pull on our yarn tail until the loop disappears. Once you've completed this, your magic circle is complete, and we should have six stitches around. 
For row two, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our circle. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of six stitches around. So you can see that this is my first stitch, so I'm going to insert my hook into this stitch, yarn over, pull that back up through the stitch, I'll yarn over again, and I'll pull that through both of the loops that was on my hook. And that is our first single crochet of this row. So I'll continue single crocheting until I crochet in each stitch around my circle. So that would be a total of six times. That's two, three, four, five, and six. And you'll notice that my amigurumi arm folded upwards. But you can also see that my tail is on this opposite side, so the one that's facing out. So this is actually the inside of our amigurumi, so the wrong side. And then the correct side is right in here. So typically when you're making amigurumi, there's a natural bend so it tries to curl up on you, but what you have to do is just fold it back out so the correct side is facing out. And that concludes the second row of our arm. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of six stitches around. So to finish off our arm, we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull through and pull through again to create a slip stitch. And now I'm going to trim my ends. So I'll get out my scissors, I'll leave a long enough tail so that I can sew the arm onto my otter's body, and then I'll trim it. And while we're here, we can also trim off this inner tail that's inside of our arm. Then you're going to pick up your arm and you're gonna pull your hook so that your tail end is fully pulled out and you're ready for sewing this onto your otter's body. And now we've completed the arm or leg. Make sure you crochet three more of these. Now we're going to crochet the ears of our otter. Our finished ear should look like this. You're going to want to make two of these. Using our blue yarn, we're going to start off by creating the loop of a magic circle. So we'll hold our yarn tail in the bottom corner of the rectangle that forms from our knuckles. We'll pull it diagonally across to the top outer corner of our knuckles, pull it straight down across our top knuckles, and then we'll bring it diagonally across to our top inner knuckle, straight against the back of our knuckles again, and we'll hold it in place between our pinky and our thumb. So now we should have an X shape. We can insert our hook underneath the top outer corner of our X. We'll reach over, hook on to the top inner corner of our X, pull that through, twisting our hook so that we can have one loop around our hook. We'll rotate our hand a little bit and hook on to the yarn that's closest to our knuckles and we'll pull that through the loop that was on our hook and then we can release our fingers. We'll untangle our yarn tail a little bit and we'll just pull our working yarn to the top. So now you should be able to adjust your circle and now we're going to start adding stitches inside of the circle. So we'll start off with a single crochet in the circle. And then we're going to create a half double crochet, one double crochet, one half double crochet, and then a single crochet. So we'll create the single crochet first. So we'll insert our hook in the circle, yarn over, pull that back up through the circle. We'll have two loops around our hook. We'll yarn over and pull that through both loops around our hook. For a half double crochet, We'll yarn over with our working yarn. We'll insert our hook inside of the circle, yarn over again, 
pull that back up through the circle. We should have three loops on our hook this time. We'll yarn over and we'll pull this through all three loops. Now we're going to create a double crochet. So we'll yarn over with our working yarn, insert our hook inside of the circle, yarn over again, pull that back up through the circle. We'll have three loops around our hook. Now we'll yarn over and pull this through just the first two loops that are around our hook. Then we should be left with two loops around our hook. We'll yarn over again and pull this through both of the loops on our hook. And that completes our double crochet. So now we'll do another half double crochet. So we'll yarn over, insert our hook inside of the circle, yarn over again, pull that back up through the circle. We'll have three loops around our hook yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Finally, we'll do a single crochet. So we'll insert our hook into the circle, yarn over, pull that back up through the circle. We'll have two loops, yarn over and pull through both of the loops around our hook. Okay, I'm going to untangle my yarn tail one more time. And now we're going to tighten up our circle. So you're going to take your yarn tail and you're just going to pull this so that the loop tightens and you get sort of like a half circle shape. Now we're going to grab our scissors and we're going to trim our yarn so leaving a long enough tail so that we can sew our ear onto our otter. Then we're going to take our hook and we're just going to pull it so that our yarn tail goes through and we're just left with, instead of a loop, we're just left with one yarn tail that we can use for sewing. And then if we turn our ear to the other side, we can see our original yarn tail. We're actually going to finish this off. So get out your yarn needle and you're going to insert your yarn through the needle and I'm just going to insert my hook underneath one of these stitches and pull this through then I'll insert it back underneath that same stitch and I'll pull it through and this time I'm going to create a simple knot just so that we fasten off the magic circle and it doesn't come loose. Once you have your knot, you're just going to insert your needle through some of these stitches. And then give this a trim. So we're basically hiding our yarn tail. And now we can see that the back of our ear is nice and clean. We've gotten rid of the extra yarn tail and we're left with a semicircle shape and one tail coming out of the side so that we can use for sewing onto our otter. And now we've completed our otter ear. Make sure that you make two of these. Now we're going to crochet the kelp for our otter using our green yarn. Once we finish crocheting our kelp, it should look like this. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a slip knot. To do this, we're going to take the tail end of our yarn and grab about eight inches, and then we're going to take that and drape it over the working end of our yarn, which is the yarn that's connected to our yarn ball, to form a loop. Then we're going to take this tail end of our yarn again, and we're going to lift up our loop and put it behind the loop so that it forms a pretzel shape. Make sure that your tail end of your yarn is underneath the loop we initially created. Then we're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to insert it in the first loop of our pretzel and underneath the tail end of our yarn. And then we're going to pull our hook up out of this middle section of our pretzel. And while we do that, you're going to want to grab the tail end and the working end of your yarn so that they don't get lost. 
So now you can see that I have this really big loop around my hook, a small little knot here, and then my tail yarn, and then my working yarn. So we're going to tighten up this loop by pulling on our tail yarn. So you can pull that and it should tighten up for you. So now you should have the tail end of your yarn, one loop around your hook, and then your working yarn. And that completes our slip knot. The next step is to chain 16. So to do that, we're going to yarn over with our working yarn, and then we'll pull this through the loop that's on our hook. And that creates our first chain. You can see our chain is this small V right here. So we're going to want to continue chaining until we have a total of 16 chains. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So once you have all sixteen of your chains, it should look like this. Next, we're going to crochet in all of our chains across this row. And I typically insert my hook in the top loop of the chain. So we're going to skip this first chain here that's right next to our hook and we'll insert our hook in the second chain and we're going to start with three slip stitches. So for a slip stitch I'll just yarn over, pull through, and also pull it straight through the loop that was on my hook. So that's our first slip stitch and then we're going to create two more slip stitches. Our second one is our third one, so yarn over and pull through all the stitches on our hook. And now we've completed our first three slip stitches. So for the next four stitches, we're going to single crochet. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull through. I'll have two loops, yarn over, and pull through. So that's our first single crochet. This is our second. third, and fourth. So for the next five stitches, we're going to half double crochet. So to do that, we'll yarn over with our working yarn, we'll insert our hook into our chain, we'll yarn over again, pull that back up through the stitch, we should have three loops around our hook, we'll yarn over and we'll pull through all three loops. So that's our first half double crochet. So I'll do that again, I'll yarn over, insert our hook into the chain, yarn over, pull that back up through the chain. We should have three loops around our hook. I'll yarn over again and pull through all three loops. So that's our second half double crochet. We'll continue this for the next three stitches. Third half double crochet. Fourth. and fifth. So now I'm going to single crochet in the next two chains. So first single crochet and second. And for the last chain we're going to slip stitch. So I'll insert my hook in the chain, yarn over, pull that through the chain and the loop that was on my hook. And now we finish crocheting our row so I'm going to get out my scissors and I'm going to trim off my yarn, leaving a pretty long tail so that I can sew this kelp onto my otter's body. And then we'll take our hook and we'll pull this through. And then we'll take this initial tail, so not the one that we just trimmed, but the one from the start of our chain. And we're going to trim this off. So I'm going to get out my yarn needle and I'll thread my needle. Once I've threaded my needle, I'm going to insert my needle in a few of these stitches and I'm going to pull it through. 
And then I'm just going to create a small knot using another stitch. So I'll almost pull it completely through, but once I have a small loop, I'll insert my needle back into that loop. And then that will create a small knot. So this will just tighten the end. And then I'm going to again insert my needle through a few of these stitches just to hide this end. And pull through. And then I'm just going to trim this off. And now we've completed the kelp for our otter. Now it's time to sew all of the pieces together. So before I start the actual sewing process, I first use sewing pins to place all of the pieces onto my amigurumi just to make sure that I like where the pieces are going to end up. The sewing pins also help keep the pieces in place while I'm sewing. However, if you don't have sewing pins, you can also just hold the piece in place while you sew it onto your amigurumi and then do this one by one. At this point in the tutorial, you should have your four arms and legs, your two ears, your body, and your cup. So for the ears, I like to place them on rows four and five from the top of the head on either side of the otter's head. So I can count one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm going to place my ears somewhere around here. So I'll grab my ear and I'll place it around there. And then when I like the placement, I'm just going to pin it in place so that it doesn't move. And then we'll do the same thing with the other side. So for the arms, I placed them on rows 12 and 13 of the body below the eyes and place them right here. And then on the other side as well. Next, we'll place the legs on rows 18 and 19 of the body. And we're going to just place this directly below the arms. One more. And then eventually we'll want to place the kelp right alongside the stomach of our otter. But I'm going to hold off for right now so that we can first sew on the arms and legs. So first we'll sew on the arms and legs of our otter. So you're going to want to thread your needle. And I'll show you how to sew one of these and then I'll sew the rest myself. So. I'll take this first pin out just because it's a little bit in the way so we can see the stitch of the arm. So hook onto the opposite side of that stitch so it's part of the body. And just come out the side here, just one stitch over. And I'll pull this. And then that stitch that we saw on the arm that was right across from the stitch that we inserted our hook in, we're going to hook onto that so that it basically pinches those two together and sews them together. And pull this through. We'll have sewn those two pieces together. And now we'll find the next stitch on our arm, which is right about here. So we'll insert our hook in the stitch under that. Of our otter's body so right about here in our otter's body and we'll pull that through and then we'll find that stitch that we were looking at on the arm 
and we'll hook underneath that and we'll pull this through so that it sews those two pieces together. And then if I ever reach a pin, I'll just take it out so it's not in the way. And now it's time to sew this next stitch. So I'll find the piece on the body that it's near. Hook under that stitch. And then I will also hook underneath the opposite side. So the stitch that's on my arm to connect the body to the arm. And one thing that I didn't say before is I did not stuff the arms and legs. Because they're so small, I figured that they didn't really need any stuffing. You're welcome to stuff them if you like, uh, but I did not stuff them. If you see some fluff, that's just from sewing and the stuffing that's inside the body. So then I'll take this stitch. This is the next stitch of the arm. So I will hook my needle underneath a stitch on the body and then I'll come back up to sew the stitch of the arm and we're almost done just a few more left so when it gets pretty close I kind of just take out all of the pins you can see we have our little arm so we'll hook underneath another piece of the body and then onto this next stitch and then we've got one more left so we'll hook underneath this and then under this stitch of our arm make sure it doesn't get too tangled Okay, so now I've sewn all the way around my otter's arm, and once I get to the end, I like to personally hook onto a place in the body and pull my hook through. And then I like to create a knot just so that it fastens off and it's nice and secure on the body and it doesn't unravel. So I'll pull my needle through that same place. And before I completely tighten this, I'll insert my needle back through this loop to create a knot. And once I've secured the knot, I'm going to insert my needle inside of the otter's body. And I'm going to come out a different end. And I'll pull this through. And this hides that extra tail. So I'll trim this and then this tail will come back into the body and it'll be hidden from view. And now we've sewn on one of our arms and legs. You're going to want to repeat this process for each one. Now that you've finished sewing on the arms and legs, it's time to sew the ears on. So we're going to grab our yarn tail and we'll thread our needle. And then we will look at our ear and this is going to be quite similar to what we did with the arm so right across from where our yarn tail comes out of the ear we'll hook on to a piece of the otter's head and we'll pull our yarn through and then we're going to insert our hook through one of the stitches of the ear. I think my pin's in the way. So hook onto that stitch and we should go across to the other side of the ear. We'll pull this through. I'm actually gonna take this other pin out too. So we're, we're thinking this ear is gonna go straight down. So we'll hook onto another piece of the head, which is just right straight down from the piece where I originally started sewing. So we'll do this and then again we're going to come back into the ear and just move over a little bit so that we're sewing those pieces directly together. 
So now we'll continue doing that again. We'll just move down a little bit more. And then we'll go back inside the ear. Okay, and then we're going to move down into row five. So I'll do this a little bit more. Go into the ear. Now you can see I'm just going to pull this a little bit more this way so that it's a little bit more rounded and like a half circle. So I'll insert my needle through this stitch on the head, just a tiny bit lower, and then I'm going to insert it a little bit in the side of this ear, and that will just pull it down a little bit. So now you can see we have our ear sewn on. So we'll insert our needle back into the head of our otter, and I just like to come out somewhere right along this edge. So we're going to fasten off and make a knot. So I try to keep it as close as I can to the blue. And so I'll hook underneath a little stitch in this blue so that we can create a knot and fasten this off. So I'll hook onto that, and before pulling this all the way through, I'll insert my needle through that loop. And then that should create a knot to secure everything together. And then I like to insert my needle right next to where my knot was, and I'm going to kind of push this a little and come out some side of the body. So I like to pull it out of a part that's the same color just so that you won't be able to see the blue peeking out. So now I will take my scissors and I'll trim this off. Okay, so now we've sewn one of our ears onto our otter. Now you're going to sew the other ear onto your otter. Now that we've finished sewing on both of the ears onto our otter, it's time to sew on the kelp. So for the kelp, I like to first lay it across the otter's body, and then I'll take a few pins and we'll pin it on the body. And you can pin it however you want on the body and sew it in whatever direction. If you want it to move a little bit more out to his other hand and then back over, you can. I tend to like it like this. And now you're going to take your needle and you're going to thread it with the tail from our kelp. And now we're going to sew the kelp onto our otter. And for this piece, I like to first insert my hook in the back side of the kelp just so that I can get my sewing thread on the back side. Take this pin out for now. Okay, and then I'm going to find the piece on the otter's body that matches where my thread is coming out of the kelp, and I'll just hook onto that. So we'll go probably here in one of those stitches. So I'm going to hook onto this, and then again, I'll hook onto a side on the other side of the kelp so this is still on, on the back side but it's pretty thick so i tend to like hook onto one side and then hook onto the other side so we'll get onto this side underneath the kelp and you could definitely if you prefer sew all the way along the kelp but i just put a few stitches just to keep it in place okay so now that this bottom part is in place i'm going to insert my hook underneath the body and i'm going to come out somewhere around here. So I still want it to appear underneath the kelp. So I'll pull this through. And now you can see here, I've come out of the otter's body. And now I'm just going to insert this right where the kelp meets it. And then out of the other side of the kelp, this is still the back side, so my hook, if I take my pins out, I'll try to get a better view. 
So you can see that I hook across right the back side of it so that I can connect these two pieces together. So if I pull my yarn through that, it's going to join those two pieces together. Then I'm going to insert my hook in the body. And if I place my kelp where I want it to be, I'm probably going to come up right around here. Okay, so I'll pull this up. And then I'll find where my kelp meets that. And so then I will insert my hook across the kelp. And I'll pull this through. And then I'll insert my hook back into the body. And then I'm going to probably come out right around here so that I can get this top part of the kelp sewn on. So pretty much near the hand. So I'll pull this back up through. So that tightens this part onto the body. And then I'll find where on my kelp this reaches. So it's right about here. So I'll insert my hook across that part of the kelp, the back side. And I'll pull this. So now I'm going to fasten this off with a knot. So I'm going to insert my needle right near my yarn, where my yarn's coming out, somewhere on the kelp. And I'll pull this through. Before I pull this loop tight, I'm going to insert my hook back through to create the knot. And once I tighten that, I'm going to insert my hook in the body and I'm just going to come out the opposite side. And I'll pull this through and then I'll trim off this yarn. And now we've sewn all of the pieces of our otter together. Now it's time to work on the felt detailing for our otter. So for this step, you're going to need black felt for the nose and mouth and pink felt for the cheeks. You'll also need scissors and pins if you'd like to pin them in place while you glue. And then you'll also need a hot glue gun or fabric glue. So you'll see here that I already cut out all of my pieces. I am not going to recut them for the tutorial, but I will share with you a few tips. So using your pink felt, you're going to want to cut out two circles for the cheeks. For the circles, you can draw a circle on a piece of paper, cut that out, and then use that to place over your felt and then cut it like a stencil. Another thing that you can do is hold a coin that you like the size of. Here I'm using a euro and you can place it over your felt like so and then you can cut around the coin. I really like this because unlike paper which you can cut over and cut the paper as well, you cannot cut a coin. So this allows me to create very circular cheeks. And if you are making a smaller otter, you're going to have to use a smaller coin for this and cut out smaller cheeks. So once you've cut out both of your cheeks, you're going to cut out the mouth. So the mouth is a small, thin rectangle. And when you have the mouth, you're going to want it to span about one and a half rows. Once you've cut out the rectangle, you're going to want to cut out a small bean shape using your black felt for the nose. I usually just eyeball this. So you're going to place the mouth at the bottom of row eight, spanning all the way up through half of row seven, and then you're going to place the nose on that half of row seven that your mouth is on. So it's going to overlap each other. And that will be the placement of your nose and mouth. So while you're gluing, you can also Put a pin in there just to keep everything in place. For the placement of the cheeks, I like to place them below the eye and then over diagonally. 
And then I also use sewing pins to keep these in place while I'm gluing. So I'll lift this up, glue, and then I'll swap to the other side to glue. And then we'll also place this cheek below and then diagonal. And once we have all of our felt pieces, it's time to glue them onto our otter. So I like to start with the cheeks because they're a little bit easier. So I usually lift up half of the cheek and I'll put some glue around this half and then I'll press it and then I can remove my pin. Turn my otter a bit, lift up this half and then glue this other part. And now we can do the same for the other cheek. And now we've finished gluing on our cheeks and all we have left is to glue on the mouth and the nose. So then I, this one you have to be a little bit careful with if you're using hot glue rather than fabric glue just because you want to do your best for it not to show. So I just get a little glue out and I just dab it very lightly on the back side of this rectangle. And then I press it down, try to get it as straight as possible. And once you've glued on the mouth, you're going to take this off. And I do like to come back in here and glue the other half of the mouth. So I'll put a little glue on here make sure that it stays secure and I'll press that down and now my mouth is fully on so now all that's left is to glue this little bean of a nose on so I like to find the placement that I want and then I'll stick the pin in one half of the otter's nose so that I can lift the other half and put a little bit of glue down and press that down then i'll take the pin out and i'll glue the other half of the nose down and then i'll press that down Once you've finished gluing all of the felt details onto your otter, congratulations, you've completed your Amigurumi otter. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this from me, please subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments section below what color otter you made. Have a wonderful day and happy crocheting!